Yep. So we've got a great big study happening here at the AIS. We're looking at race walkers over four weeks of an intensified training program. But three weeks of that program, we're going to be intervening with three different diets. First, we've got the high carbohydrate availability diet, which means that for every session, we're trying to make sure that the muscle's got plenty of glycogen and the brain's got plenty of glucose. And so that means we're going to be eating carbohydrate pre-exercise, during long sessions, and refueling after exercise. Then we've got this new low carb, high fat diet where we've stripped all the carbohydrate out or as much as we can and we're allowing the athletes to eat a very high fat intake and trying to learn to adapt to being better fuel burners from fat. And our third diet is a really interesting one. So in the end it'll have the same amount of carbohydrate as the high carbohydrate diet but we're going to package it differently. So some parts of the week we'll be putting plenty of carbohydrate around training sessions so that the athletes will be able to train at really high quality and for long, prolonged periods. But other parts of the week we'll actually take the carbohydrate out. So we want to use that stimulus to make the muscle adapt in a different way. While being on the diet, I haven't really noticed anything different in energy levels because the food I'm eating is pretty similar to what I normally eat at home. Um, so I guess it would be more interesting to see what the other athletes on the different diets are feeling, um, particularly the high fat um, or the periodized athletes, because the high carbohydrate is a pretty standard diet for what most athletes follow. The energy levels have definitely been an adjustment um, from the first week. The first week took some getting used to and, and the body was just not, not nearly um, in a place of adaptation, so I struggled a lot. After the first week or so, I started to feel adaptation and I had a really good week of training of being able to get in my longer, slower um, distance stuff in really well. Where I still struggled though is on the harder, high intensity sessions. Um, just being able to get my body up to that level of intensity has been, has been a struggle. I think it's just figuring out whether the, the periodization does work for, my, for myself and you know the other athletes are sort of doing the, the high fat so it'll be interesting to see what they get out of it and for me whether my body's being able to cope with that and maybe I introduce it you know leading up to a major competition. This is a, a very applicable study to a range of sports, um, many types of sports, endurance sports whether it's cycling or triathlon or marathon running um, have a similar kind of a training philosophy that underpins it and um, there's many other kinds of sports where some of these adaptation ideas are also going to be important. For the high fat people it's going to be pretty terrible all around but they get better at being able to cope with it. Um, we're not quite sure whether just trying to adapt in one way is the best way. For the periodised people we're having small periods of terrible, um, hoping that's going to lead with the periods of great into a, a more um, a clever adaptation, so lots of different angles of adaptation will occur. And with the high carbohydrate people, they feel pretty good all the time, even though they're training at pretty high volume and intensity, because they've got the fuel always there. But whether that's the best way to be able to promote adaptation um, by always feeling good is um, the million dollar question.